Hi all, uh, welcome to today's uh, webinar on uh, DevOps oriented test architecture model at R&B by Stefan Scrum. So here's the quick introduction about Stefan. Stefan is currently working on Robert Bosch projects in the field of BI, Big Data, Data Lake, SAP environment and inter-logistics DevOps deployment pipelines in a MU service Chickens and Docker architecture environment. His main topics are currently the modularization of quality based test fixture all along the production development process and deployment pipeline applying a DevOps approach. So, over to you, Stefan, to let us know more about this architecture model. Okay. Epika, I can begin? Hello. So, hello, dear all, um, colleagues from Capgenes or Getty. As the has introduced, uh, I bid you welcome to this test talk about a really challenging topic. I think everybody of us has heard about the, the DevOps paradigm, the DevOps practices, and I want to introduce to you to an approach, to a test approach that we have taken, undertaken uh, a Dev, uh, DevOps-oriented test architecture model within a project at Robert Bosch, Germany. I'm from Germany, from the office Stuttgart, and I'm happy to discuss with you uh, this challenging topic. So just let's uh, have some words about Robert Bosch in a nutshell. Robert Bosch uh, sees itself as a global network company, industry company, worldwide acting company uh, within 60 countries, 40 regional subsidiaries, has about 402 a uh, thousand associates and um, and the sales um, revenue 2018 of 77.9 billion euros. It's uh, there are four business sectors: the mobility sector, uh, providing parts and goods for the car industry, like BMW, like Daimler like the VW, the, 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 the et cetera, concerns. Industrial technology is one of the leader of the industry 4.0 process and, and program in Germany, producing energy building technologies like, like heatings and like lightnings and consumer goods and house techniques. Yeah. Okay. So this is, I mean, everybody of you, of you have heard of Robert Bosch. Uh, there is a, challenge now within this digi digital transformation transition state that Robert Bosch wants to make uh, half of his sales of his revenues in the next years by IT products by software products and uh, doing like this there is a corporate function is called CIDAE1 for which I worked as a IT quality and test consultant and this um, department within Robert Bosch is providing test services, as we see here, uh, providing test services concerning test management, test coaching, test planning, test case creation, test execution, and also test automation. And within um, this um, this work, within this um, this mission, I had the chance within in collaboration uh, within a. Uh, Within, with a test architect, with an architect, with a system architect, and with an automation e expert to create, to design, and test architecture within a project that is rather that was rather DevOps oriented. We will talk about this later. Just let's remind us uh, of some DevOps principles which are important for us to understand how was our ongoing process, how did we create, how did we approach to this, to this uh, software uh, test uh, problem. So if we remember, there are three principal DevOps, there are three de principal DevOps oriented uh, points. We have to respect a flow, a feedback and experimental learning. So the idea behind it is accelerate the flow through technology value chain, diminishing the throughput time, 
results in improvement of the quality in process, which is important also for us, the testers or the quality engineers, and enables us by experiment experimenting to overtake our competitors. Here we have the market-oriented aspect of DevOps. DevOps is, has to constitute, has to base on organizations which are working completely uh, market-oriented. Yeah. The practices that, that result from this are continuous build, integration, automated test, deployment, the environments on demand as a service, the limitation of the work in process or in progress, and agile organizations working by internal contracts. Yeah. So these are all orientational frames, are all, um, let's say, paradigms that we tried to take into consideration when we, when we began to create our test architecture, our test process concept. So the next uh, idea that we try to follow, try to realize is the feedback aspect. So what we want to do, I mean, you see here, these are the ideas coming from the lean production, from the lean production experiences. Yeah. So fast and continuous feedback flow of information within all steps of the value chain. The feedback has to serve to understand bottlenecks, defects, how to solve them, and how to avoid to repeat them twice. So here the question is, we need a high flow, want to have a velocity in our software production process, but we want to have also feedback and forward, forward uh, loops that helps us to get information immediately about our quality and other aspects. Leave and place the knowledge there where it is needed to build quality in process. Care that quality becomes the source of the work. So quality aspect is an important aspect within the DevOps process. Understand problems and recognize them as soon as possible and care and commit for resolving them. This helps to accelerate our feedback loops and accelerates the throughput time. These three principles are easily read if you know perhaps the DevOps Handbook from Gene Kim and other authors, you find these principles in the so-called three paths, three-way aspect of the DevOps project. So, and last but not least, uh, we have the idea of experimental learning. We want to have a continuous learning. We want to improve our agile process and our, our development um, process and our, our uh, deployment process. And this we try to do with continual learning. And for this, for instance, we have, when we are thinking about our user story based sprints, a user story based, based process, we have the spikes, the so called spikes, which are tasks where we can invent or try out new technologies. The creation for confidential and generative culture with a dynamical, disciplined, and scientific approach is important. And servant leadership, we call also this leadership by humbleness or humble serviceness. That supports progress based on experimental work and calculate risks by exploiting in good manner success and failures. Learn faster than your co-competitors. Here we have the market and the, the idea. We want not only produce software for the software, we are not only software software engineers, but we are working to support our, support our commercials, to support our business by creating software. So we have co-competitors, also Robert Bosch has co-competitors and we want to be faster, better, and with a, high quali with a higher quality uh, than they, and become so successful in the market. Okay, act local, think global, this is the idea. And if we think that Robert Bosch has a, a, a vast or a big company in India, for instance, it's called RBEI, Robert Bosch Engineering India, we understand that we have to think global, we have to act also global, but we have also to act local. So this was just a small reminder about the DevOps principles uh, that also uh, for us had been a sort of leading idea, of inspiring ideas. So what was the project about? Um, I bid you if you have questions or if I am too fast or if we want to discuss a, a topic or a slide. So I bid you really to interact and to, to intervene. There's no problem for me for us. So what was this, this, this project about where we created our, our test architecture, let's say. The project is called Brocon and it's an 
an um, interlogistic, it's, it is yeah, an interlogistic, international interlogistic, worldwide acting interlogistic uh, process or software, web-based software, an OLTP software, an online transaction-based, web-based software, interacting or playing the bridge within the fabrication uh, between a so-called NIF plus and and ERP, SAP system and uh, the MES system. Here we see it clearer. Here we have the broken, which substitutes or with, which replaced an old, an old controlling and steering tool for the interlogistic. And on the one side we have the SAP ERP um, software, the PP, the PP product planning software. On the other side, we have the MES software, the machine um, executing system software that controlled and steered the fabrication. So if we want to, to, if we want to act or if we want to do really um, test architecture, DevOps oriented test architecture, we need capabilities on, we need an architecture we are basing, we have to base on an architecture on capabilities which support and DevOps process. And here we have to say that this new architecture was based on a microservice approach, yeah? on the capability of a flexible, of a scalable, scalable intra, intra, intra in, infrastructure to add CPU, storage and RAM and a data center, yeah? and a separation between data and logic. So microservice means above all, microservice means above all, we have encapsulated bounded context-based functionality where we have a GUI, a graphical user interface part, where we have a business logic part and we have a database, a data layer part encapsulated that helps to easily also test these parts. So what here we can see that there is a so-called DevOps appropriated value chain in this architecture. And here we see parts or aspects that the architecture and the project respected in order to help that a DevOps approach can, can be realized. So we have bidirectional traceabilities. We have different systems in our development, continuous integration and deployment pipeline. We have test, Q, and P systems. We have a monitoring concept, which is a very important part when we are thinking on so-called cross-cutting concerns, yeah, plays an important role in DevOps. We have automated self-testing builds. We see this later with our CI uh, build integration server, Jenkins. We had a versioning. We had an incremental release, zero down rollback. API design supporting also RESTful interfaces, which we used, which we, which we tested, or we tried to test with appropriate tools like Postman Newman. See this, and we have a runtime scalability. All these aspects are helpful, and had been had taken into consideration by the architect in order to to put a DevOps test architecture on it. So how was the architecture looked like? It was a typical three, four layer architecture with a broken, with a broken user interface layer. Here we have two functionalities, operation view and Heyunka, with a service layer, an application logic layer, and with an um, interface layer uh, data for data provider, data adapters layer for the external interfaces. One of our ideas had been surely because we wanted to support a high velocity, a high flow in the production and software production, how to map this, is what we say, the test, the agile test parameter coming from Mike Cohen, how to map this test parameter onto the so-called architecture component art architecture from which we take we took the scope of testing so this was one of, of our of our basic approach we took the test pyramid as one of our 
it's one of our we can say of our uh, frameworks for the automata automation automation and the question was how to map what kind of architectural part want we to cover want we to test with what kind of test type or what kind of tool so we're coming to this later on do you have any questions or any comments up to now no okay so i will continue so if we see here it was a microservice architecture and for the testers or for the test um, test manager or the test architecture uh, the challenge is on the one way how to test the internal logic within the services based on classes yeah? and what to do with a manifoldy uh, interfaces interfaces from component to component from microservice to microservice but also then later interfaces between the micro between procon microservices and between external systems like the sap system or the nif plus system and other systems so here we will see later on that the interface testing part was a very crucial a very important part within the different test levels that we created so here we decided to use the open source uh, tool postman yeah yeah because we knew that with postman we can work quite well to cover and to test restful rp interfaces uh, within our procon layers or our procon uh, application and between procon and the other systems so the understanding of the microservice architecture or the understanding of the all over technical architecture is one of the important preparing preparing aspects preparing activities within the creation within the design phase of a test architecture of a test architecture without the understanding of an architecture i think you can't you won't help really effectively to support a project team or an IT development team to 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 accelerate the flow, to support the flow, to support the velocity. Yeah. One of the first understanding is understanding is the architecture when we are doing DevOps appropriated test architects or architectures. Here we see the initial development and deployment landscape before we began to create our test pipeline to create to design and to apply our test architecture so the project team the development different development teams um, they decided to take Jira and x-ray as the agile tools in order to to track uh, and and design the backlog design user stories define the sprints and all the different meetings and different activities and to create test cases this is done with the plug-in tool x-ray they used uh, IntelliJ as the IDE as an integrated development um, um, environment um, creating their new features and writing unit and component tests the Bitbucket Git repository was the source code management repository Jenkins was the all over CI build server from which the continuous builds were created. And then later it was thought that with Docker containers to create quality and staging, quality and staging environments and uh, also delivering um, on production. So that we had four, this, the idea was to create four different environments, a, a development environment, uh, um, a queue system, a quality environment, where also the interface to SAP was possible, yeah, and broken um, quality environment. A staging, this was, I mean, a pre-prod uh, environment before the production, rather production similar um, data equipment, and then the production. So this was this was the the rough, we can say, development CI CD continuous integration, continuous uh, continuous deployment environment that we found when we began to to support them in um, in the quality 
engineering way. So how did we see as test architects? So I was the, I can say was the process quality expert. One of the colleague uh, was um, automation expert. And the third was really the system architect, the capability expert. This is also something we can, we can perhaps keep in mind if we want really to work in a DevOps environment or want to accelerate the process, the throughput, it's not, it's not worth working isolately in a silo. A test expert is important, but he can't do anything alone. He has, he needs the collaboration within the other experts so that we have different views on our architecture cube, different views on our process and our solution and that we have really, um, um, you can say, a work, to, a, a work together, really, and, and concerted activity in order to understand on a from a holistic view the whole problem. But we had a, an action plan, four action plan. So as we are working in an industrial environment that is also related and also dependent on governance and compliances, we had to take into respect also in our test architecture the all over guidelines, the all over quality guidelines, process guidelines that each project at Robert Bosch has to has to has to follow and has to comply. So we are start, we started from our knowledge of the all over norms of the process and quality norms, standards and directives which are ruling at Robert Bosch, like the EAC 15504, which, which is the, um, the um, which is an automotive um, uh, guideline, uh, automotive spice guideline. We have the CMMI. We had an internal Robert Bosch so-called PIP. We had the central development or central directives of quality and all the so-called ISO ESDQB ISO uh, quality guidelines like 2919 and, and 25010, et cetera, et cetera. So this was one of the aspects we had to respect. We had to start from this knowledge. And our first idea was to create a so-called uh, product test concept. So this was the first thing, product test concept, in order to understand from the whole, from the, from the product view, how to create a test concept, how to install it later. So the first thing was to create a so-called test reference model based on normalized rules. And later on, the next step was how to bring this in a concrete technical, in a concrete technical test engine, you can say. So the test process engineering was the next step yeah, within the software development cycle from our theoretical architecture picture until the proof of concept. So installing along the different test levels with clearly defined test tools and test um, methods, test techniques, uh, test pipeline that work together with the whole development phase. Yeah. So this was that we called the test process engineering, or we can say an implementation model of our test solution. And the last thing we had to do was to bring this into life to install a process management after the process engineering, after the technical engineering implementation of our test model, we had to train the, the software engineers to train our, all our stakeholders and all the, the actors within the software development lifecycle to use and to apply these tools and these methods. So this was our for action plan attitude, our high level, our helicopter view from the test management point of view. Yeah. Yeah. So here, this is the test management toolkit where we saw or where you can see what are our tools, what are our test tools yeah, in order our handcraft tools in order to realize apply uh, the test architecture. So we can see a quality cockpit 
this is very important. We need a tool. This was in this case X-ray as a test tool, Gyra as the release and backtracking tool, in order to define a test plan, to define our test cases, yeah, to manage our defects, to manage our test process at all. So a quality cockpit was to create it. Then we knew that DevOps is based on a highly automatic test pipeline, very little manual testing, very little explorative testing, user acceptance testing perhaps, but we need a kit with high performance test tools. So we um, disposed on SonarCube and JUnit and on the one side ABAP unit because we worked also with SRP systems as unit test tools. We are coming to this in detail later. We had Postman and SOAP UI as interface supporting tools and Selenium as a tool with which we can um, test also graphical user interfaces. Then we had a manual, some manual testing coverage, manual tools for user story, for end-to-end -end test and for user acceptance test. So this was the kit for the automatic, for the automatic tools. Then we followed a certain, we followed up the process by using, in order to assure uh, more or less total coverage, we followed the so-called test level concept, the unit test, component test, integration test, and the system tests. And this we had to map on our Brocon deployment pipeline that you can see here. Also. So this was our toolkit, our test management toolkit. Yeah, we had some attitudes, we had some views um, from the test manager point of view. We had a toolkit and our first solution was to create this test architecture model. And here we followed on the one side, we tried to combine a classical approach by creating in a planning phase, a so-called test concept, product test concept, a test plan using the norms and using the guidelines, discussing with a project, what are really the quality criteria that have to be assured within the Brocon system. So here we defined the quality vector, if you want. Important was the functional capability, compatibility, performance, usability, reliability, and maintainability. And those of you who knows a, bit, a little bit the conflict or the context of quality and DevOps practices should perhaps have a question here or not. The question is, what kind of quality criteria can we really test with distinct test tools? And what kind of quality criteria have to be monitored or have to be achieved by cross-cutting concerns. Yeah? So the cross-cutting concern is a topic that's very important. For instance, usability, reliability, and eventually also maintainability, but other illities too, can't be tested in a classical way. So what was the first and most important quality criteria for us was the functional suitability clear. And here we can see that the quality aspect is something that has to be discussed with the architect, the product owner, and above all the developers. If there is no clear and um, clear and unambiguous um, quality idea between these actors, the architects, the developers, the product owners, and the testers, they will get a problem in the ongoing production because this is the common, this is the common, you can say this is the, the, the smallest the common denominator that every of these actors have to have in order really to achieve quality within the system. So the quality analysis is a very important thing that has to be done together. Yeah? The same idea about quality, what do we understand behind it? How do we assure it? How do we implement quality in the product by developing, by implementing, by using guidelines for the programming language, et cetera, et cetera. The next thing which is important for us is to create a test strategy, a test strategy that supports 
the DevOps idea of high flow, high velocity, short and quick uh, feedback loops and continual learning. So for us, it was very important between one release cycle, the release cycle you see here on the SA0, a release begins, and SA1, a release ends, and within the release, we have several sprints to say, okay, we have to cover the quality on a low level, on the unit testing part, on a component testing part, on the integration level, and on the system level and lately on the use acceptance test level. All these test levels we have to assure within one release. And in this case, um, the project, I think the sprint lasted three weeks and a release lasted, uh, there was, I think, six to eight sprints for one release. So we are very far away from high DevOps development rates, as we know from Amazon or from LinkedIn or from, from Netflix. The idea was to support their development by highly automated tools that we used in order to cover the unit test by taking the JUnit tool, so the Java stack, JUnit tool, in order to cover the functional aspects on the class, on the object, and on the methods niveau, and also the component tests, and using the Suna cube in order to a structuralize a structuralized analysis of the code. So as a code analyzer, we use SonarCube, and as a functional test and assertion test, we use the JUnitude. For the integration test, remember that there are a lot of interfaces between the, between the microservices, but also external interfaces. We created or we defined three different interface test levels, IT1, IT2, and IT3. The IT1, should assure the testing between the external data providers like NIF Plus or MES and Brocon, the IT3 between the, between the interface between SAP and Brocon, and the IT2 interface level was the, was the, was the testing between the component to component within um, Brocon. Here we use post human which uh, showed or which, 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 which was evident to be a really a very, a very a performant tool in order to test these interfaces. Then there was an idea to test the system, uh, the system from the system test point of view. On the one side, ST1 was a user story acceptance test and SD2 was the end-to-end -end test. Here we used LeanFT as tool. The system, the ST1 and the unit test and component test had been part of every sprint. So this had been sprint, synchron, test, um, um, test levels. And the other tests, above all, the UAT and the high level test and the system test had been tested that, that were running along the sprints, sprint asynchron. So this was basically our reference model that we created as first in order to have a holistic view for everybody, clear understanding how our test process had to go on and had to be implemented from a, let's, let's say from a top down base. So we respected also the compliance needs from Robert Bosch point of view by doing a real classical planning. But then we went down until the code in order to show that we have here an implementation of technical based, of te technical based and tool based test process. Yeah? So try to keep in mind these three aspects, a planning aspect based on test norms and on software development norms, an aspect to understand what is quality in our architect and what is also quality in our process. So we have quality in process and quality in product. Has, does everybody has a clear understanding of the different quali quality criteria and how to assure them. So here we see some correlations, some uh, um, uh, flashes that shows what kind of test level based tool can support what kind of quality criteria. Here we see the unit test is also able on the one side to support functionality on class and component level. And on the other side, if we are thinking of Sona Cube, it helps to 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 achieve 
a certain clean coding quality or clean coding state so it supports the maintainability yeah or the integration the integration here we have different aspects that, that we can cover for the integration test we can cover on the one side the compatibility yeah so is Procon able to call SAP we are an HTTPS protocol and do we get back a representation in form of XML um, 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 uh, data. We can also control or test functional parts when you're doing integration tests by controlling that the content of an XML um, data uh, file is correct. Yeah? And we can even do a, per a certain performance monitoring because we're getting back the runtime or the 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 the, um, the response time when we are doing integration tests with Postman. So here, with one tool, we have different quality criteria that we can cover. Well known that this is an all-over automatized test engine. Engine, you can say it's a test engine. Yeah. So so here we have the cor cor correlation between our quality. Let's say our quality metrics or our quality understanding and the tools that we are using in order to cover this quality. It's also an aspect that is important to show in a, such a um, reference model. So before we are going into the detailed agile processes or process that we tried to apply and try to optimize in order to assure a high flow, a high velocity. Um, let's just have a look from the test point of view or from the quality point of view, how a test information stream, I call it now test information or test data stream, has to be organized in order to support this highly automatized test engine. So here we see some flashes and this what 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 there was a problem within the project to understand that the product owner based or um, responsibilized uh, process from the product backlog until the test process has to be optimized and has to be organized too. It can't be an improvised thing. It can't be because we are an agile work. It can't be just uh, something that is worked on ad hoc. It has to be organized. So we understood that the product owner has to understand that he has really to create for us a test base by a well-developed, um, let's say, requirement engineering process, agile requirement engineering process, we are the product backlog and product refinement. He has to 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 provide um, a test space by which or with which we can really create useful and trustful test cases. So this test information stream has to respect a good coordination and a new culture, a new understanding, coordination of how to organize a product backlog, in this case in Jira, and how to harmonize and transform it into a really um, efficient and effectful specification space in, in, uh, in, in, in X-Ray. So the transformation from user stories, user stories refinement, uh, definition of DOR, DOD, clearly defined requirement design until a test case on a granularity, on a specification level that we can really create useful and powerful and detailed test cases is something that in a agile process that wants to go in direction of DevOps has to be really precisely organized. And here the product owner and the test manager and also the architect have to work closely together. Otherwise there will be a fraction and there will be a break and there will be a lot of, let's say, a lot of delays and high cost of delays within this flow. And on the other side, on the other side, we have to understand how to transform test cases into test scripts for unit testing, component testing, and for the different system tests. This is also important. This aspect of test information stream is not to neglect. So let's go on. So what is the idea behind 
um, DevOps-oriented agile test process or process. We are coming from a trade and release oriented activity. We are going to time box activities, but at least we want to have really an understanding of the whole processes. We want to reach a full stack process activity. So the define phase, the requirements phase, the build and test and deployment phase should be aware by everybody and should be at least understood by everybody. So we are coming from a more or less a silo oriented trade trade oriented and trade based process until a full stack process activity so this is also something the test manager or the quality manager can support and can assist and here when we are talking about devops organization we should understand that there are different forms of agile agile teams team organizations at least we should afford this kind of perspective organization this means a cross-functional organization but this cross-functional organization can also be detailed and also be can also be transformed into a so-called component team organization where each team is responsible for a certain layer of the software for the presentation layer, logic layer, database, and uh, Linux or kernel layer or technology layer. And we can also organize it in form of feature teams. So these are at least organization forms that should be mastered and should be really followed if we want to go into a direction of DevOps. Yeah? Yeah. So from cross-functional teams to more and more specialized interacting cross-functional teams, which have a lot of a bigger a bigger efficiency and at the end what is really demanded or recommended to create so-called platform and self-service teams yeah. but this means really an organization that the teams and the organization is harmonized with the architecture that we want to realize so for instance for this microservice architecture we need teams like self-service teams which are responsible for the design of a microservice functionality for the implementation, for the test, and for the deployment until operation. Yeah. In our real scrum process, like program scrum process, we had this kind of meetings, which are classical, which are, which are known uh, for those who know the agile scrum process. And in our concern for our test process and our test architecture, it was important to add some meetings. We had to add a test case design meeting or a test case design process, which wasn't implemented when we began to support the software development team. We had to define a test execution process and a defect, defect meeting process. So if we are looking onto the product backlog, it was clear that there was a learning phase. Now we are in this continual learning aspect of DevOps, that they had to understand that uh, a use case with acceptance criteria are not enough in order to understand the subtle and the detailed um, requirement rules and customer requirements, etc. So we had really to refine or to add on the users on the user story on their user story process and process that helped to create at least use cases so that we could define process flow or more detailed process flow within bpmn by add of bpmn uh, diagrams uh, definition of the states of the system states of the object states and um, by definition of requirements in natural language so this was the first thing that we implemented in order to improve the quality in process a clear requirements concept that helped us to get a test base on which we can we could really derive the test key items yeah, important so another thing that in this context i could perhaps or i would like to to propose you if you don't know look a little bit on this alternative agile requirement approach um designed by ellen gottesdiener it's a very interested thing about three aspects within or in order to refine your user stories in a structured and in a rather um, lean way uh, she's proposing a structured conversation 
in order to work on seven product dimensions and in order to plan the different horizons of our software production along the releases. So here I have a YouTube. We don't want to, to work on it. We don't want to see it, but you can. I propose it to you. So if you're interested in these slides, you can you get this slide and then you can have a look onto this uh, uh, YouTube. Um, it's a very interesting approach. It's a really a good uh, trade-off between the old classical um, old classical requirement engineering based on work elaborated workbooks and the user stories, which are not really enough in order to assure that the implementation corresponds to the users and to the user's needs and to the requirements. So this is based on the product partners. Yeah, this is the this is the the structured discussion between customer, business, and technology, in order to evaluate, confirm, and explore, explore, evaluate, and confirm the requirements that we really need. And the scope are these seven aspects of the system, the use of the interface, action, data, control, environment, and quality attribute. So this is just a recommendation. Look at Ellen Gottesdiener. She's a very interesting, interesting expert in requirements within the agile, within the agile process. So this was one of the acts or of the facts or of the test aspects of the quality aspects that we introduced with our test architecture concerning the agile process. It has nothing to do with our tooling, with our product analysis. We'll see this later. It has something to do with, with a better organization, uh, uh, a straightforward organization, and a lean organization of the preparing process around backlog refinement, backlog preparation, sprint planning. The next thing was how to execute our tests. No, sorry. Um, the test case design process. So we used uh, we used X-ray in order to implement our test cases from this requirement, this refinement of the requirements. <clears throat> so we based on the Jira requirement module with epics, with stories, and with requirements, and we created <clears throat> some X-ray uh, issues like test, test sets, and precondition. <clears throat> we define test plans with test executions in order to do our manual execution, our manual tests. And we created also for our automatized um, um, integration tests, we create also test test cases here. Uh, and at least we had the we had the bugs. The bug is a, an X-ray issue, but it was it was triggered by the execution of the test cases within the test executions. So um, how did it work? The idea was we are testing within a DOR and a DOD cycle certain test cases. The defects or the bugs had been organized with a defect workflow, and the DOD was arrived when finally the bug was really fixed and was really retested. Interesting is how we defined in our X-ray how we try to synchronize or to modelize our test levels, our test levels, the unit test level, the integration test level, IT123, and the system test level, how we tried to modelize this within our X-ray. There are different approaches. And what we did, we said, okay, we need a test plan, not for every sprint. So it was not a sprint oriented test plan definition, but we took our test plan in order <clears throat> to, in order to, to to um, to define uh, the test levels. So we had a test plan for interface tests, we had a test plan for user story tests, and we had a test plan for end-to-end -end tests. Yeah? And within our interface tests, we used so-called test sets in order to capture and in order to, to bind together all SAP interface tests and all internal workflow tests and all tests to other third parties, to external data providers, yeah, like MES, etc. So we re regrouped and grouped together really the tests concerning the test levels and concerning the internal functionalities. The same we did with our user story tests, which are tests synchron, um, 
uh, user story synchronized or sprint synchron test, where said, okay, for every business module, for every capability that we want to modelize with uh, microservices, we have to, we need test cases and we bring them together according to the business modules. So the business use modules had been test sets headers, yeah, group leaders, where we group together our test case. And here we have to differentiate between sprint synchron or sprint box test tests and sprint asynchronous tests. All our integration tests to SAP worked not within sprints because the SAP active, the SAP developers, they worked in another rhythm, in another in another um, agile organization than the broken guys. And so it was not possible for us to synchronize the tests, the IT tests, the integration tests with our with our with our broken sprints. So here we had the asynchronous sprints, and we had sprint boxed uh, um, um, tests where we tested all the user stories. On the one side, the unit tests and the component tests, and on the other side, uh, user story based uh, GUI based user story tests uh, realized with Lean FT. So this was our model, our X-ray model to support to assist a high velocity a high, let's say, a high flow uh, within our testing and within the sprints. Uh, how did we do our reportings? One reporting um, was done by Jenkins. This was the reporting following the unit tests and the component tests and the integration test done by Postman. And on the other side, we had a uh, reporting installed in Confluence in our project conference where we had an all over defect. You could track an all over defect situation and where we could follow the high level test, the high level test uh, tests like uh, the end to end tests. Least, last but not least, we had the defect meeting to organize and there we created a swim lane based defect cycle that we try to integrate in the sprint planning in the sprint planning um, strategy. So here is a tester defect management meeting and the developer, and here we have a flow across these different actors or these different responsible persons for the defect management in order also to organize the, the bug fixing and the bug uh, prioritization, et cetera, uh, in, a, in a process way and not just in an ad hoc way or in a in a way that, that couldn't be controlled. So, and now let's, I see our time will come to the end. We have uh, still eight, um, seven minutes. And if we go down, we have to understand that, that there have been some aspects, quality aspects, and the quality is the starting point normally in order to create, in order to design a test architecture. Yeah. We have here some quality aspects or quality concerns which hadn't been discussed and which are, which are dedicated to the so-called cross-cutting concern aspect. Yeah. So this was something that was excluded from our test architecture, out of our test architecture. This should come later. These are things like load and performance test availability, interoperability, security, reliability, usability, scalability, and we have new called new quality attributes like arrival rates, queuing discipline, scheduling, etc., which are really which are really related to the load and performance. All these all these quality aspects should be discussed together with the system architect because these are cross-cutting concerns traversing and concerning the different layers of our architecture. So there is no uh, easy and from the testing point of view isolated solution possible. This means an, an all over understanding of, this, of, the, of the different behavior, performance behavior of the whole system in order to fix, to understand these quality criteria and in order to define a really efficient and effectual uh, test solution. 
So here are some books and references for DevOps topics. For those who are interested in more details, I mean, everybody knows perhaps the DevOps handbook from uh, Jean Kim et al. There is a very interested, some interested books about DevOps architecture, Len Bess, Ingo Weber, Liming Zhu, I can recommend it really, Software Architects Perspective. We have a very interesting uh, architecture book about software architecture in practice, also defining uh, rules for the DevOps, also from Len Bass, defining software architecture as a practical approach, and above all, we don't have to neglect a knowledge about microservice architectures. Um, there we have a German book from, just let me see, from Eberhard Wolf, who is one of the leading, leading experts concerning microservices, basic or flexible software architectures. These are references I can recommend for those who are really interested in architectural-based, architectural-oriented test models and test processes. And at least we are coming to the end. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, now it is time perhaps to have a small discussion. Right. Uh, thanks, Stefan, for taking us through that. Uh, attendees, uh, please feel free to uh, ask your queries through the chat and Q&A sections. We have four minutes left. Mm -hmm. Are there any of the audience who have experience with DevOps processes or practices or projects or testing? Yeah, I think uh, we have quite a few who said they do have queries. Okay. And, uh, yeah. So if we can't if we can't answer all the questions, feel free to to join to 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 send me an email. I would be happy to get into discussion with you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and dear colleagues, because um, DevOps is not is not a practice, and it's not an we don't have a recipe. It's an approach. It's uh, it's always in trial a trial. It's every project has to find its own way, its own not solution, but its own um, way to to reach or to get into this idea that they will be more performant or they will be more efficient or they will reach a certain flow target. So there is no yeah. standard solution. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, we have a query from Daniel who asked, yes. uh, how do you see the influence or use of AI in relation to your systems method? The AI tool is the enterprise architecture tool. What is the AI? I know AI from Sparks as an as an requirement design tool. Enterprise architecture is this the question? Uh, it's about the artificial intelligence. How do you see the influence ah. or use of artificial intelligence (AI) in relation to your systems or methods? Ah, how I see the influence uh, of from artificial intelligence yes. on what? On DevOps? In relation to your systems or methods? Uh, in relation to my systems and methods, um, the the artificial intelligence. Um, concerning the test and the test method is highly based on the research or on the analysis of of data, of test data, yeah, of big data. So we didn't we didn't discuss here the aspect of test data. If there is a good source and if there is a good base of test data, I can imagine that artificial intelligence can help to define or can help to detect gaps or needs in this different test level aspect. So artificial intelligence can help to say, we need more unit tests, we need more tests in, in integration tests or in other levels. There is certainly a relationship between this model I propose to you here and the artificial intelligence on the one side. Yeah? Does this right. correspond uh, to you? That answers your query, Daniel. So 
any queries, please feel uh, free to reach out to Stefan anytime through email. Yes. So, thanks uh, all the participants for joining us through this webinar, and thanks a lot, Stefan, for taking us through this uh, webinar. Yes, thank you very much for your attention, and it was a pleasure for me. Yeah. Thanks for your time, too. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah. Have a nice afternoon, nice evening. Thank you. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye-bye.